of everything. As I saw, uh, I think the last thing that we were doing was uh, was this thing. We had done, uh, so we had done alcohols that I told you that alcohols, they ionize, but they ionize like the terrible acids and uh, they don't usually have any acid properties. And uh, their ionization is very, very, I mean, it's, it's very, very less. And uh, they only have one reaction, with, which is with sodium. So we did discuss why, why alcohols are such terrible acids. I told you that because the oxygen, the negative ion, it's attracted to, it's attached to a carbon chain, which is, uh, which has a lot of electrons in it. And it pushes the electron onto the oxygen, which increases the negative charge at this point. So if you have a, if you have a higher negative charge at this point, uh, that indicates that uh, uh, the attraction for H plus one is going to be more. So you're going to have more attraction for H plus one, and it will not dissociate ionize. And then we talked about carboxylic acids that uh, they're kind of relatively the strongest uh, acids, and they have all acid properties. Uh, so carboxylic acids. They also tend to ionize. But the thing was that in carboxylic acid, you have this oxygen, which is electronegative, that kind of pulls the electron density away from this oxygen. So the negative charge at this point is not that strong. So the H plus one is not really that attracted or that strongly attracted to this oxygen. So, so that was uh, the reason why uh, they would dissociate more because uh, it was easier for the H plus one to leave because there was less attraction because the electrons over here would get pulled by the other oxen. So we wrote the reason for that. And then we had to talk about phenols. And I told you, uh, we started discussing the structure of phenols. Now the structure of phenols is that uh, you have six carbon atoms we were just briefly discussing this. So you have six carbon atoms. Uh, each carbon atom is uh, sp2 hybridized. Uh, it is sp2 hybridized. What that means is that, uh, that's what that means is that carbon is bonded to three atoms. So carbon is bonded to three atoms. So out of the four electrons that carbon has, three, three electrons they bond with different atoms. Uh, the fourth electron is kind of still in its p orbital. It's not. It's not initially bonding. So each carbon atom has exactly the same structure that it has. It is making three bonds, while the fourth electron is initially not bonding. And every atom, carbon atom, is exactly identical. It's they're all sp2 hybridized. And eventually, what happens is that all the p orbitals they start to overlap, which results in the formation of a pi electron cloud above and above and below. Now, because of that, the thing that happens is that when pi bonds are formed, the electron that was present in this orbital over here, not only is it overlapping with on the right side, but it's also overlapping on the left side. That kind of indicates lesser electron density. I mean, although there is a pi electron cloud, but the electron density, the electrons are more spread out. Like a pi electron cloud over here is being shared on the right side. It's also shared on the left side. So the electrons, is, it's kind of more distributed. Is this point clear? Yes, sir. TK, is this clear? Ethan, Minail, is this clear? Adam, is this clear? Yes. Yeah. So the thing is that uh, because because of this uh, because of this uh, uh, kind of a it's it's trying to form a double pi bond. It's trying to form a pi bond on this side, and it's at the same time it's trying to form a pi bond on this side. So the electron density is more spread out, which means that overall there is an electron cloud, but the electron cloud has low charge density. And if it has low charge density,
what happens is that it has an electron withdrawing effect. Like you've got this lone pairs on oxygen. Now, oxygen lone pairs have very high charge density because oxygen is a small atom. So you can imagine that these electrons are kind of uh, are trapped in a very small atom. So, so the electron charge density is very high. So these electrons, they would kind of tend to get distributed onto the pi electron cloud. Uh, because the negative charge over here is going to be very concentrated. The negative charge that's over here in the pi electron cloud, that's lesser, relatively lesser. So the lone pairs or the electrons that are, uh, remember oxygen is one of the smallest atom. It just has six protons. So, so the electrons are very concentrated. So they're going to get distributed. They would start overlapping. So this is what will happen that the lone pairs on oxygen They overlap with benzenes, pi electron cloud. So in a way, what's going on is that benzene over here has an electron withdrawing effect. Is this point clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so overall, it has an electron withdrawing effect that uh, it kind of pulls the electron density away from the oxygen and the electrons kind of because there's this wide area where there's a pi electron cloud so the electrons kind of tend to uh, be as I mean if you know physics electrons tend to be as uh, far away from each other as possible so the electrons kind of get distributed onto this entire delocalized pi electron cloud uh, so let me draw this again TK very quickly uh, And also drawing the pi electron cloud, that's every carbon atom has a p orbital. Or we can uh, just let me just copy it. There must be one drawn somewhere. So the structure of benzene. TK, if we have the Uh, let's try and this one is fine. That's the structure of benzene. So this is how it's going to look like. And we are dealing with phenols over here. So I'm going to turn this into a phenol. So there's an OH group that's attached. So there's an OH. Uh, each carbon atom would have an H. Uh, they're not showing the H. But each of the carbon atom, the third bond, would be with a hydrogen atom. And all these electrons, they would be overlapping above and below. So there's overlapping happening. So there's overlapping, there's a delocalized pi electron cloud everywhere in the structure I just so I have I have this benzene uh, when the oxygen and the H plus one is lost the H plus one breaks away the extra negative charge that's on this oxygen because of the negative charge that's uh, all uh, I mean because the H lost the electrons 
So that negative charge would also start to overlap with all these electrons over here. TK, because it has a it has a low charge density, the electrons are very distributed. So these electrons are kind of are going to get mixed with this. The negative charge is going to get delocalized over the pi electron cloud. And each of the carbon atom would have a third bond with an H atom. So why is this a relatively strong acid? Uh, the explanation for that would be that lone pairs on oxen, they tend to overlap with benzene spy electron cloud. As they tend to overlap with benzene spy electron cloud, and because of that, uh, uh, the charge density on the phenoxide ion, which is this ion, I mean, there's going to be less negative charge density over here, which means that the H plus one is not going to be that strongly attracted back. So the charge density on this C6H5O minus one ion decreases. and the ion becomes more stable. And there's going to be less attraction for H plus one ions. So, there's, because of that, there's going to be more dissociation. And it's going to behave as a stronger, as it's going to behave as a stronger acid. TK, is this clear? Just for, phen uh, just for phenols. Everyone, is this clear? Basga, is this clear? Pirahil? Zoha? G, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, just for clarity, because benzene is new, I'm just going to uh, repeat everything. Uh, remember what sp2 hybridization was, uh, that when carbon is bonded to three atom, it has uh, four electrons, three of them get busy in bonding. So the fourth electron is not doing anything. So in benzene, every carbon is uh, making three bonds with three other atoms. Uh, so each carbon atom is bonded to three atoms, one on the one with H, one with this carbon atom, one with the carbon atom over here. Each one of them has an extra unused P orbital, an electron that's not doing anything. Those electrons kind of get uh, mixed up. They end up overlapping with each other. And when they start overlapping, they, they result in the formation of a pi electron cloud, which is above and below. I mean, it's surrounding the, all the carbon atoms, uh, similar to this. And I told you that uh, this pi electron cloud has low charge density because the electrons over here are not only getting distributed to the right, they're also getting distributed to the left. So the electrons are kind of very, very distributed. So they're very far away from each other. So that kind of decreases the charge density and that uh, because of that, the electrons, the electrons that are trapped with oxygen, TK in a small area, they kind of get mixed with this pi electron cloud. And uh, that decreases the negative charge at this point because these electrons they eventually get delocalized or get mixed up with these electrons over here and if the negative charge over here decreases then the H plus one would no longer be attracted that strongly and it would be able to leave or dissociate because the attraction would be lesser so that's all about weak acids so remember uh, although we haven't done phenols completely yet, remember that uh, phenols are kind of, uh, I mean, their strength is in the middle somewhere. So we're going to make a, or construct a table, TK, that would, that would determine uh, which acids are weak, which acids are strong. So alcohols are the weakest acids. Then you've got phenols. 
and then you've got carboxylic acids. And uh, also, because that's a table, and uh, so reactions with sodium, then sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate. As anyways, this one is the weakest, and this one over here is the is the strongest acid. Uh, with sodium, the only thing that reacts with sodium is uh, the, f I mean, all of them, they react with sodium. With bases, NOH, this, alcohols are terrible acids, they don't react, but phenols and carboxylic acids would react. And with carbonates, these two are not going to react. Uh, alcohols, carboxylic acids being really strong acids, relatively speaking, uh, they're the ones that are going to react. So phenols are kind of in the middle. Uh, they are acidic, but not that strong an acid. I mean, they don't uh, fulfill all the acid properties. They don't do all the reactions. Carbonates are weak bases, so they don't react with carbonates, but, uh, but they do react with sodium, uh, the metal, and uh, the base as well. But just they don't react with carbonates, that's it. So remember this table about uh, about acids. And the summary is, if you want to sum this up, if you have an electron donating group, it's going to be a weak acid. And if you, if you have an electron donating group or effect, not a donating, a withdrawing group, something that pulls the electron density away, so in that case, it's definitely going to be a strong, it's going to be a strong acid. So you've got, you've got two things going on. You've got, uh, I mean, whenever you have an electron withdrawing effect, the negative charge kind of decreases and the H plus one is no longer attracted. And vice versa, like in alcohols, uh, if you have, I said like in alcohols, if you have an electron donating effect, then the negative charge would increase and the H plus one would uh, be attracted even more strongly to the oxen. TK, is this clear? Yes, sir. I said now, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to try and compare uh, weak and strong acids, but we'll do the comparison uh, between the acids. For example, uh, I've got two carboxylic acids because there's a comparison now. I've got a carboxylic acid, which is this one. Okay, so now the comparison is between carboxylic acids. And I have another carboxylic acid, which is this one. Which one do you think is a stronger acid? Which one is a weaker acid? Any idea? Left strong, right weak. As the right one is going to be weak. Uh, as I said, so what's the idea, TK? Why is the right one the weak acid? Why is the left one the stronger acid? The idea is it, it's got a bigger alkyl chain, a carbon chain. Alkyl chains have an electron donating effect. This one has a much tinier alkyl chain. So the electron donating effect would be a lot lesser. So in both cases, let's assume that the H plus one has broken away, right? So the H plus one is now trying to move away. It's trying to dissociate ionize. Over here as well, it's, it's trying to break away. 
but because there's more electron donating effect, you've got uh, a bigger alkyl chain. And there's going to be more electron donating effect. Uh, that would increase the charge density. The negative charge would be a lot higher. This negative charge at this point, uh, at this point, the negative charge is going to be a lot higher. And if the negative charge density is higher, it's uh, it's going to be more. There's going to be more attraction for H plus one ions. So in this case, uh, what it would do is that the H plus one would be a lot strongly attracted to the negative charge, and which is why it's going to be more difficult for it to dissociate or ionize. So it's going to be this one is going to be considered a weaker acid out of the two. TK, you clear? Is this clear? Ethan, is this clear? Mohammed, yeah. the beater. Okay. So remember this, if you're, if you're comparing uh, acids within a group, like a box like acids, there's a comparison going on. Uh, then the one that has more electron donating effect, a group that's attached, that's pushing the electron density towards this negative charge, uh, that would make it weaker. Uh, so remember electron donating group, you always get a weak acid. As a simile, we can do another comparison now the comparison is between ethanoic acid well because it's uh try propanoic acid so i've got propanoic acid and the other one is uh that's the other one is uh i mean this propanoic acid there is So this one is, this is a CL attached. That's the difference. And then you have a third one. And in that case, there are two CLs attached. Now again, in each case, uh, they're all acids, they're all carboxylic acids, the H would, uh, would break away, right? If it ionizes, there's going to be minus one charge, there's going to be minus one charge, and there's going to be a minus one charge over here. Which negative ion is going to have the largest negative charge out of the three? What do you think, the left one or the right third one? Third one, third one. Is it going to have a larger negative charge or a weaker negative charge? Larger. It's going to have a weaker negative charge because what effect would CL have? Is it going to be an electron withdrawing effect or would it be an electron? Okay, yes. CL is a okay. high, as a CL is a highly electronegative element. So what it would do is it's going to try and pull the electrons away from this uh, from this side. CL is electronegative. TK, if you know that, this CL is one of the most electronegative elements out there. So it's going to try and pull electrons away from it. Uh, over here, there is no CL, so there's only an electron donating effect, like the carbon chain is trying to push electrons onto this oxygen negative. So this one is going to have a larger negative charge or a larger negative charge density. This one would be in the middle somewhere. So over here, you have more electron withdrawing effect. So you're going to have more electron withdrawing effect and because of that, uh, there's going to be lesser negative. Charge density. 
and if there is lesser negative charge density that means that uh, the the h plus one is not attracted back i mean there's going to be weaker attraction for h plus one so it's going to dissociate easily it's going to be a stronger it's going to be a stronger acid Uh, there's going to be less attraction for H plus one. So the H plus one would be able to leave, leave easily. So let's less attraction for for H positive ions. Okay, so and I'm also going to add more CLs, more CL atoms. So this is what's happening when you're trying to move to the right. Uh, is this clear? Yes. Yes. As says you're going to get lots of uh, different questions on this. Which one is a strong acid? Which one is a weak acid? So we can try another one, uh, which would be very similar to this one. Uh, so now this other one is uh, I mean, this would be an, uh, I mean, this one, let's try and do propanoic acid. With a seal attached over here. And let's do another acid, which is also propanoic acid. Except that the CL is attached now on the second carbon atom. Because I've I have these two. I'm dealing with these two carboxylic acids. Okay, assuming that the H dissociates ionizes, and that results in the formation of a negative ion. I said now in these two cases, both of them have one CL. So there's uh, there's one CL. Which one do you think is going to have a lesser negative charge? Left one or right one? Right one. Tegan, what's the reason for that? It's closer to the carbon, the carboxylic acid. Tegan, so it's closer to the, so it's it's going to have a more electron withdrawing effect. I mean, this one is like really far away, so its effect would be kind of, I mean, its effect would be there, but not as strong. So over here, the CL is closer. So there's going to be more electron withdrawing effect because it's very close to the carboxylic acid group. TK, is this clear? So there's going to be more electron withdrawing effect and because of that uh, it's going to be a stronger stronger acid so when we have when we have lots of electrons then we have the withdrawing effect and when we have like comparatively fewer electrons like if they were all edged then we have donating effect yeah i didn't get it when we have a lot of electrons no i mean like when do we have the withdrawing effect when do we have donating effect as a carbon chain, remember carbon chain has electron donating effect, okay? Alkyl chains. Uh, CLs are electronegative atoms. I mean, you know already that they are electronegative, so they always withdraw electrons. They always try to pull electrons away from other things. Is this clear? It was it was withdrawing effect because there was a CL atom present in the carbon yes. chain. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because because all the all the other aspects are the, exactly the same. Okay, so, I mean, there's a carbon chain that's going to have an electron donating effect. This carbon chain would also have an electron donating effect, but that factor is the same. So I'm not discussing that because uh, the difference is not because of that. It's because of the CL. The CL is positioned in different positions at this in both these molecules. Okay, there's one place where CL is very close to the to this group, and there's this other one where the CL is very far away from the group. So if it's closer to the group, there's more electron withdrawing effect and the CO minus one ion would be more stable. It's going to have lesser charge density.
and it would result in a more stable ion. See? So is this clear to everyone? Yes. So remember, you get a questions about CL, CL, I mean, CL are electronegative atoms like fluorine, uh, like uh, any other electronegative atom. They always have electron withdrawing effects. So we've discussed lots and lots of uh, examples where we are doing comparisons, TK. So just remember why acids become strong, why do they become weak? Uh, it all depends on the donating effect or the withdrawing effect. Uh, you've got an OH, the OH is supposed to lose an H plus one and it would result in the formation of a negative ion. Uh, whenever you have, whenever you have more donating effect, more electron donating effect, uh, and I'm going to write this over here. Uh, you can have more donating effect when you have an alkyl chain. Like carbon chains, they always push electrons. Withdrawing effects uh, would be like uh, electronegative atoms like oxygen or Cl. They're going to have an electron withdrawing effect. Uh, this same thing pretty much happened with carboxylic acids. That, that was the reason why carboxylic acids were strong acids. Uh, where are carboxylic acids? Because there was an electronegative oxygen at, at the other, at right next to it. So it would withdraw the electrons towards itself. So which is why the negative charge at this point was lesser, the negative charge would get distributed between the two oxygen atoms. TK, so is this clear, everyone? Okay, what makes an acid strong? What makes it weak? Clear. TK, everyone, Abila, is this clear? Minahil, Sohail? Yes. So moving on, this is all about acid strength. The next thing is about bases. TK and we'll quickly try and it's, it's going to, bases are going to have exactly the same logic. Why are some bases strong? Why are some bases weak? Uh, when we think about organic bases, uh, it's basically, uh, we're talking about nitrogen bases. What do bases do? Bases accept H plus one ions. So they're kind of the opposite. The, they accept H plus one, they accept protons. Like acids wanted to lose H plus one, they want to accept H plus one. And so why, why are nitrogen bases bases? So we're gonna start off with ammonia, like why is ammonia basic? The reason ammonia is basic is that ammonia has this uh, lone pair. If it has, just a second, the question is if you have more than, uh, it will definitely affect uh, the acid strength. But remember, uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely going to affect the acid strength. TK, uh, like the point is, uh, let's discuss this. What if an acid has two carboxylic acid groups? So if I have an acid and it's got two carboxylic acid groups instead of one. Uh, I mean the other, I mean, what, what should I compare it with? Like, I mean, remember acids, it's always a comparison with something, TK. So would it be more acidic? Would it be more basic, but compared to what? That's the question. So let's say I have a propanoic acid molecule, right? Zaheb, is this clear? Okay, it's always going to be a comparison. You, I mean, an acid on its own is not going to be strong or weak. It has to be strong or weak compared to something. Zaheb, is this clear? So what I'm what I'm doing is I'm comparing. Yes, so what I'm doing. I said, so what I'm doing is I'm comparing it with propanoic acid. I have a, I have a three carbon atom. I mean, your question was, if it has two carboxylic acid groups, would it be a strong acid? Or would it be a weak acid? 
So I've I'm I'm trying to do a comparison. Like I've taken another carboxylic acid which has three carbon atoms. It's the same carbon chain, but it has only one carboxylic acid group. So the question is interesting because you have to remember you're going to get a question similar to this actually. I mean the question could be anything. The only logic that you're going to apply is whether there's an electron donating effect or whether there's an electron withdrawing effect. So let's say one of the H plus one is lost in each case. So the H plus one is lost. This becomes negatively charged and this H plus one is also lost. So it becomes negatively charged as well. So for which of these two would it be easier to lose electrons? Can somebody guess? Which one would ionize more or more easily out of the two? The first one. As remember, the first one just has a carbon chain. What does the carbon chain do? It has an electron donating effect. So it's got an electron donating effect. So that would increase the negative charge at this point. So negative charge is going to be higher. There's going to be higher charge density. So it's going to attract the H plus one back again. It's it would be much it would be more difficult for it to ionize. So the ionization would be weak. It's going to be a weak acid. Is this clear? Yes. Yes. So, but if you compare with compare it with this one, you've got a carboxylic acid group. What do you think? Adding this carbox, I mean everything is the same. But what do you think this carboxylic acid would do? Remember, I told you previously that the two H plus one would not be lost at the same time. And actually, I told you that losing the first H plus one is easy. Losing the second H plus one is more difficult because uh, when it comes to losing the second H plus one, the ion is already negatively charged. So it's it's much harder for it to actually lose another H plus one. So let's talk about the first ionization, just the first H plus one breaking off. Now, carboxylic acid is probably going to have an electron withdrawing effect because uh, there's, a, there's a highly electronegative oxygen that's in it. So there's going to be an electron withdrawing effect. So the negative charge over here would, would eventually decrease. There's going to be some effect. So the negative charge over here would be would be lower because of this serial bond over on the other side. This oxygen is electronegative, so it's going to try and pull electrons from somewhere. It's going to try and pull electrons from here as well, but also from here. So there would be some effect on this oxygen and the negative charge would be lower, which means that the H plus one is more likely to ionize because it's not going to be pulled back that strongly. Zaheb, is this clear? Yes, sir. So, so remember, you can make up anything. It's like any you can come up with any question. That's, I mean, those are the type of questions that are going to going to appear in your exams, and you have to guess: is there electron donating effect or is there electron withdrawing effect based on that? Okay, is this clear? Yes, sir. As I just wanted to discuss this nitrogen basis. Uh, why are nitrogen compounds basic? Because, uh, like, if you take NH three. It has a lone pair, and if there's an H plus one around, that lone pair will be attracting the H plus one. So, which is why they basic. Uh, they would eventually form a dative bond, and and its four plus one is going to be formed. The H plus one would be accepted by the lone pairs, and they would end up forming a dative bond. Okay, so this is why it's going to be basic. Chadhika, let's continue with bases. Uh, we'll do comparison of bases tomorrow then. Take care, everyone. Allah, sir. All right, sir. Thank you. Take care. Take care, Allah, sir.